Hey, kindred! So, I've been quiet. Have I been quiet? I feel like I've been really quiet. I've been trying to answer all my side hustle stuff, and I know I've thrown things out on Twitter, but I feel like I've had zero energy for much of anything. My mana pool is generally way lower than normal. What, you might say? What do you mean by mana pool? Well, I'll tell you, you beautiful creature. My name is Carrie Calligan, and today we're gonna talk about energy conservation. Before we jump in, the live stream went so, so great. I did not expect so much support. We raised over our goal for NAMI, NAMI, never quite sure how to say that. And we are uh, continuing throughout the month. So I left the link below if you didn't have a chance to contribute and you still want to. Again, it's an amazing organization that provides mental health education for both people who are diagnosed and people who just want to learn more because it's really important to have neurotypical people understand how various atypical and neurodiverse brains work. They provide counseling and therapy for people who might not be able to afford it through normal procedures. They provide a free 24-hour helpline that has helped countless people. I'm sorry, I, um, this month has been very hard for me so far. Uh, and depression and anxiety and uh, a bunch of other things just really sap your energy. Which is why I wanted to talk about energy conservation. And no, not energy conservation in like regards to the environment, though that is also important and really not that dissimilar, but I'm getting off track. We're talking about your own personal energy conservation. What I'm about to talk about today is similar to what is discussed in Spoon Theory, but since I don't struggle with chronic illness and I don't want to take away from people whose struggle is very different than my own, I sort of made my own similar but different thing. We're giant nerds at the House of All Worlds and I've been playing a lot of World of Warcraft with my family. Uh, it is actually very helpful for my father um, to keep him engaged with us as a family. Uh, if you don't know, he, he deals with FTD, but also it helps uh, his cognitive function. So because I've been playing a lot of WoW with my family, it seems fair that I share this sort of perspective on energy conservation with you so you can put it in your own tool belt. I'm sorry, I'm very rambly right now. Because there does seem to be a misunderstanding in our world that if you're a healthy and able-bodied personage, you have infinite energy. And that kindred is how we got unhealthy practices that lead to complete and total burnout. So let's start from the beginning. If you're not a gamer, and that's okay, what is manna? No, it's not the tasty food that God rained down on the Israelites in the Bible while they wandered about in the wilderness, refusing to ask for directions. What I'm talking about appears in a lot of our favorite RPGs and even some of our favorite fictions. Though, fun fact, in Melanesian and Polynesian culture, manna may refer to a supernatural force or power that may be ascribed to persons, spirits, or inanimate objects. And that's closer to what we're talking about, and I think that's kind of a cool... That's probably where they got it, to be honest. That was probably just stolen directly from those cultures. And now I'm sad. Mana is your magic. It's like stamina specifically used for supernatural things. Kiri, this is confusing. Why not just call what you're talking about today stamina? Because what I'm gonna talk about today relates to more than just physical energy. And when you tell someone I don't have enough stamina to X, Y, or Z, it's telling a little bit of a different story. So we're gonna use mana. And your mana here represents your emotional, physical, and mental energy combined. And the things you do throughout the day, those are spells. Each spell has a cast time, its own rules, or how often you can cast it, and every single one of those costs a certain amount of mana, regardless how negligible it may seem at first. Some spells can be activated and will go live later. Other spells require your total focus, etc. Now why is it important to look at it like this? Because once you see how much energy you're expending, you can get a better handle on why you might be burning out again and again. And again. Okay. For example, we have 24 hours in the day and 168 hours in a week on this planet. 
For me, about seven of those daily hours are forfeit because of my required rest time in order to restore my mana pool. This number will vary from person to person, obviously, but six to seven seems to be pretty consistently what my body needs to go. Okay, we're ready. There are other ways to refresh one's mana pool and resting may not always be enough, but we'll get to that later. It's at least a start. Your body does need sleep. Point is, I'm looking at roughly 119 castable hours. I work a day job, so I'm at the office about 40 hours a week. It's probably closer to 44 or 45, but for simplicity's sake, we'll keep it at an even 40. While I'm at the office, for the most part, I'm casting a spell that requires my total attention. For multiple reasons, I cannot multicast, so to speak. So that makes it 79 castable hours. I also host trivia night at Alamo Draft House every Monday, which with driving time can take about six hours and on normal week, have a staff meeting for LARP every Wednesday. That's another hour. So my average week has about 71 castable hours. Calculating on top of that, things like showering, getting ready for the day, the gym, eating, basic chores, laundry, dishes, etc., etc. Let's say I have, on average, in a normal week, 40 castable hours for creativity, socializing, or anything that doesn't fall into a typical day-to-day -day activity. This is probably being generous, but I'm trying to make a point without boring you with how nitty gritty I can be when it comes to data. So on the average week, without any further complications or obligations, I have 40 hours. 40 hours. Out of the 119 I spend awake, I have only 40 maximum to focus on what I want to do versus what I have to do. Let that sink in a moment. It's not a lot. Especially when you consider that the majority of that is Saturday and Sunday, which means I have only about three hours a weeknight to focus on what I really want to do before I start cutting into essentials, like sleep. And for me, it usually is sleep that suffers first. Then the gym suffers. Also making my own dinner, which means getting takeout. And you can see how that stress and lack of sleep can domino into unhealthy practices for both your body and your wallet. And that's just a normal week. Do a little of your own math on what your castable hours are. Count in school, work, a rough estimate of how much chores you need to do. How many castable hours are you left with? Then consider if something happens like the death of a friend, health complications, work stress, you name it. You'll find those castable hours go down even further. Because when you're dealing with stress or depression, even though you might have the time, Suddenly those things take so much more energy and you might find yourself out of mana despite that you have hours in the data cast or enough sleep. So really take a hard and honest look at your mana and spell slots. They don't always match up. The reason I want you to sit down and really quantify your free time into something tangible is because the biggest part of managing your energy, time, and mana is being able to put into perspective how valuable it is. I have only three hours max of creativity free time a day during the work week, which means I'm very deliberate in how I spend it. I'm trying to finish the second installment of my book. This is, as you might imagine, a rather large undertaking. It's time consuming, and it's not something I can do while doing many other things. To pull a little from D&D, it takes both my major and my minor actions, it requires my full focus. I have occasionally been able to go for a walk between chapters to clear my head and have taken notes or dictated them to my phone, but I've never actually written while walking. The day I manage to genuinely exercise while writing is the day I achieve some sort of life dream. Because of this, a lot of things have to take a lower priority. The first thing is usually my socializing. It's a sad truth, but writing is a solitary practice. Sometimes it's nice to sit in a coffee shop and be around other people, but you aren't really socializing. To be honest, having to stop and start with any sort of conversation while I'm trying to concentrate is strangely a very quick way to completely burn what is normally an extraordinarily long fuse of patience. This means being able to tell people no, which is a skill in itself. Bear in mind, being able to tell people no and people not being able to take a no personally are two separate things. Only one you're responsible for. And I feel artists in particular, perhaps because empathy is such a large part of our creation process, 
often take that on themselves. We blame ourselves and end up feeling guilty because we simply declined a social invitation. Again, this is why quantifying your mana and your casting time is so important. If you can really internalize the value of your time, because even if your day is rather free, remember, even our time on this plane of existence is finite, thus your time is valuable. If you truly do not want to do something, or if you simply need to prioritize a creative endeavor more, be open and honest about it. For the most part, people will understand. Communicating your energy and capability is key, as is being honest with yourself about what you can manage. I've also noticed when I do go to a social event or make plans, I'm far more deliberate with what I want to do. There's less, eh, I don't know, what do you want to do? Because you're actively engaged in conversation, you cherish your time together. Are there other ways to replenish your mana other than sleep? Of course there are. Sometimes it's canceling plans to give yourself alone time. Sometimes it's meditating or playing a game for an hour. Angelique goes to the movies. I draw in my bullet journal or make myself a cup of tea. All of these are potential ways to boost your mana, but depending what spells you might have going on in the background, they might not be enough. And despite my love for tea and by proxy caffeine, it is not a mana potion. It will not replace sleep. From one insomniac to another, Believe me, please, it won't, no matter how much we want it to. Unfortunately, we don't get real mana potions in this life. So good management eh, eh, is all about being able to honestly look at the numbers and schedule accordingly. And also being prepared to accept that something may throw that schedule completely off. And that's okay. You'll go back on track when you can. Healing, getting better, resting, whatever TLC means to you is necessary and worth the investment. And when you're ready to get back to business, calculate your mana and casting time. Track it, plan it, find out what works best for you. I bullet journal because I can't keep it all in my head without forgetting something. It helps remind me that I don't have all the time in the world. My time has value. My time is rare. My time is not owed to anyone, and I'm allowed to spend what little of it I have, how I choose, and with whomever. And it's the same with you. Remember that, please. Your time has extreme value. How do you want to spend it? I've been doing a lot of my own management lately. Um, as you might have noticed, I posted this on Monday. I'm moving my upload days to Monday, or my posting days. I can upload before. I'm moving to Monday. And the reason I'm doing that is my general schedule has changed since I initially decided to go on Thursdays. It made sense before because I worked from home Wednesdays and Fridays, and if I had little odds and ends, I could sort of do it on the side, and that's no longer the case. Also, since I now host Monday nights, it essentially meant I could do no editing, no filming, nothing could happen Monday night. And I'd kind of like to have that back. So now I've got the whole weekend to work on something if I need to, and I can film Friday or what have you. It gives me a lot of extra time, so I'm not killing myself and giving up on sleep because I need to get something out the next day. Maybe you need to make some adjustments that are similar in your life to make things just a little bit easier on yourself and that's okay to make it a little easier on yourself. Keep on the windy side of care, Kindred, and until next time, stay curious. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with someone in your life who needs to hear it. And if you like the general cut of my gibberish, please click the like and the subscribe buttons. If you wanna hang out more, you can join my Patreon or the Discord. And if you feel so inclined, you can check out this video that YouTube seems to think you'd like. Bye for now.